Hello, my name is JP Kühlwein and it's a pleasure to welcome you back to this episode of Off the Shelf, a book discussion series brought to you by the conference board. Today I will be talking with Bob Hoffman to discuss his latest two books, Laughing at Advertising and Bad Men. Uh, so in a way, this is a bonus edition for you. We're going to talk about two books. Now, who is Bob Hoffman? Bob is an ex-ad agency creative and executive. He's worked uh, in his own and led his own independent agencies as well as in global networks and that for four decades. And now he's gone rogue on the industry. He shares the ad and media world's dirtiest secrets. As marketing professor Byron Sharp says, Bob is the little child that points out the emperor's wearing no clothes. I'm jealous. I wish I'd been brave enough to be that rude. So you can hear we've got something to look forward to. Now, what are Bob's two books about? In Laughing at Advertisement, uh, or at Advertising rather, which came out last year, 2018, um, Bob uh, has a collection of his sharpest, biting, and most hilarious blog posts um, uh, from his uh, very popular uh, newsletter, I should say, that you should subscribe to, but we'll get to that later. He says it's also from essays and, quote-unquote, cave drawings. His targets are agencies and their marketing clients alike, so there's fun for everyone to go around. Having worked in the business myself for over two decades, I can confirm that the book... Uh, will make you laugh but squirm at the same time because it's uncomfortably accurate um, in its observations about the absurdities uh, that are rampant in this business. Um, yes, it's 200 pages of insults, wisecracks, cheap shots, and dirty words, as the author says, uh, but it's also very educational uh, and hopefully healing, if you like, uh, at least to some extent. And then his second book, Bad Man, uh, published in 2017, is, according to Bob, a small hysterical book uh, not meant to be even-handed or comprehensive look at online advertising. Um, it's a little book indeed. It comes in at some 70 pages or so, but it punches well above its uh, weight class, uh, uh, driving home the message of its subtitle, which is how advertising went from a minor annoyance to a major menace. Um, this book is an indictment of what uh, and an a Bob and an increasing number of experts call the surveillance uh, marketing industry, uh, more commonly known as digital marketing. Um, Bob wraps his reviews uh, uh, of the shady world of online advertising, as he calls it, into a very entertaining narrative. Uh, um, but let's not overlook that the billions of dollars that are being, quote unquote, lost by us advertisers here are uh, real billions of dollars. Maybe they're even stolen, as Bob says. And the billions of data points that are collected about all of us here, 24 7, are also real and uh, probably collected without our consent. So, with that, I hope you're eager uh, to listen uh, to this discussion about these two books. And we'll get started now. Bob, first of all, thanks a lot for joining us. Um, you're joining us from California, so it's all the more uh, appreciated you have wildfires going on down there. Is that right? Yes, we do. It's been a dreadful week here. Um, fires and people being evacuated from their homes and homes being burned. And um, as of today, things have calmed down a little here in the Bay Area where I'm from. But there are still tremendous problems out there in uh, in some areas of California. So it's been a tough week. And it's not even a first for you, if I understood you right uh, from chatting earlier. You, you, you've, uh, you, you had to evacuate uh, before, is that right? Well, I lost my home in a fire here in 1991 
uh, in the Oakland Hills where about 3,000 homes were lost. It was a terrible uh, thing. And um, having lived through it, I can tell you it's uh, no fun at all. It sounds like a systemic issue. Maybe that's where the parallel is with the subject we're going to talk about today. Social media marketing also seems to have some systemic flaws. But before we get to that, um, these two books I mentioned in the intro, Badman and Laughing at Advertising, they, they both have their very sarcastic, typical Bob Hoffman touches, um, but they're actually very different. You know, one is kind of a very direct indictment. It's short, uh, not sweet, but short. Um, and the other one are a collection of uh, the kind of humorous essays generally about advertising that, that we know uh, from you through your newsletter. Why, why these very different um, uh, uh, kind of books and why such a sharp attack directly on the social media industry? Well, um, <clears throat> The first book, Bad Men, I wrote um, in 2017, and it was not uh, a pleasant experience writing that book because so much of what has been going on behind the scenes in the advertising world is unpleasant. Uh, so much of the, the fraud that's going on, so much of the... Um, the collecting and da uh, the collecting of data about individuals without our knowledge, without our consent. I don't think it's healthy for individuals. I don't think it's healthy for society, and I certainly don't think it's healthy for democratic institutions. So, writing that book, as you say, it's a short book, but still, it was. Um, it, you know, as I wrote it. <clears throat> I was saying to myself, you know what, my next book needs to be more fun. And so uh, after I wrote Bad Men, and, you know, it was successful, I'm, you know, I'm happy about that. Uh, I wanted to do something completely different, and laughing at advertising was, I set out to write the silliest, most irresponsible book I could write about advertising, and still uh, have uh, something of value to say. But there's one thing that the two books do, even though, you know, one's a kind of a, an indictment and one's kind of a silly, um, uh, lighthearted thing, there's one thing that the two books have in common, and that is the idea that we in the advertising and marketing business don't know what we think we know. We think we know a whole lot of stuff that we don't really know. And that's, I think, the common thread through these two books, even though they're very different. So you're basically saying nothing has changed in the 40 years you've worked in advertising. <laughs> very good. Yes. Well, let, 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 let's, start, um, let's start with laughing at advertising, in which you kind of skewer uh, the ad agencies in particular, but you, know, um, you also go at everyone else, whether it's the marketers, the brand consultants, or media agencies, or whatever. Um, if, if, if you step back a little bit and you look at uh, the advertising industry, or le let's call it a modern word, the advertising ecosystem, um, what's yeah. its current state? <laughs> How we're doing on brand building and advertising? Well, I would describe the current state of the ad industry as dazed and confused. <laughs> um, we, we, we were expecting this past decade to be uh, um, extraordinarily fruitful and productive for us. We had amazing new tools and amazing new media, and we were able to reach consumers one-to-one, -one, and we were able to listen to consumer conversations, and consumers would be having conversations about our brands and helping us understand and define what our brand should represent. And, uh, and yet, the past decade has been disappointing and disheartening. So uh, what? You know, you, you, it, it, you're saying that uh, consumers don't love our brands? I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> I think Kevin Roberts would be very upset to hear that. In fact, he is, right? Didn't he write back to you that you're a liar? 
Yeah, yeah. He, uh, yeah, you, well, for those who don't know, Kevin Roberts was CEO of Saatchi and Saatchi, and he, he, he had this, uh, thing called Love Marks. And his idea was that, um, uh, what, what, what was it again? Uh, the, there are certain, the, that, uh, brands, uh, there, that we can't live without them. We care so much about the, the brands that we can't live without them. And, you know, it was a lot of, you know, marketing baloney. But, um, and he and I got into some, uh, to some back and forth on this kind of stuff, and uh, it was a lot of fun. S- sadly, he st- he stepped on his own, you know what, and got fired from Saatchi and Saatchi because of his uh, very big mouth. And he went off on how women don't want to uh, don't want to be executives in in advertising. That you know they 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 they're happy you know they're happy out working in the fields picking the cotton while we men are back at the manor house drinking mint juleps right, uh, right. and and it was uh it was ridiculous and he got fired in like a half hour after he said that stupid stuff so well i guess it it, not- it it reminds me of a rule that applies to you know advertising and marketing which is you need to kind of recognize the cultural context um and kind of operate within that i i guess there are some rules there are some things that haven't changed despite all these changes you you alluded to earlier like yeah. for example you know it always helps to have a cute cat dog or baby uh in your <laughs> ad for engaging this uh, what do you consider some of the fundamental rules of advertising um that should be applied and that every client marketer should watch out for when they evaluate the advertising being presented to them yeah, I think some of the fun, you know, this is uh, an ongoing debate within the agency industry since the beginning of advertising. My personal beliefs are, number one, simplicity. I believe that all good advertising is simple. Uh, I believe that all good advertising has a, a, a concept that runs through it that is... Um, that is universal in the advertising, that it appears in all the advertising. I believe great advertising all has a big idea to it, even though that is an unpopular point of view these days. I believe all great advertising, mostly, uh, maybe more important than anything else, talks to us not as consumers, but as humans. And, um, and, and mo- I don't know, one of the most important things about advertising that we have seem to have forgotten is that human beings are not logic machines. And, and a lot of marketers these days are trying to create a court case in their ads for why their product is better. And, and, and uh, that doesn't work. Human, yep. beings, human beings are emotional things, and human beings respond to to human um, attributes and human uh, personalities and 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 human points of view and things that tickle us and things that fascinate us and and entertain us and um, we have become so logical we so once one brain side in what we're doing in advertising particularly online that um i i think it's it's pretty clear and and a lot of the research i've seen shows that consumers are not happy with, with what's happening in advertising right. in uh the, the new york times this week had a headline uh, I, I can't quote it verbatim, but it said something like, the ad industry has a problem. People hate ads. And um, the now in the past, you know, ads were at best a minor annoyance. But now people actively hate them. I mean, the, the, so much of what of what we're doing is unpleasant and and it, and there's so much more of it and it's it's become such such a major annoyance and even that, though um, um, and e- even though i mean neither advertisers nor agencies should be surprised by that i mean psychologists keep telling us that people hate to think right think of uh, nobel right. prize winning i think kahneman who talks about 
you know, system right. one, system two. We hate to really rationally right. think things through. Uh, actually, we're emotional element uh, animals. Um, at PNG, also, in addition to your criteria, you always added that you know, good ads should have drama. Uh, should yeah. uh, either be hard or mind opening and the drama should be around the benefit of the product. So why do you think both advertisers and agencies have lost that? Uh, have they consciously lost that or uh, has the skill been lost? If yes, why? I think there are a number of factors. Number one is the what I call the juniorization of the advertising industry in which Highly talented, well-paid people have been let go for the past, I don't know, 10, 15 years as as advertising agencies consolidated and tried to um, lower their costs. And that's a big part of it. Number two, we have uh, the advertising schools and marketing schools, I don't think, have been teaching the skills that are necessary to create and recognize good creative work. Uh, good creative work is very rare. There are very few people who can do it. There's a point of view now in the marketing world and in the advertising world that uh, good uh, anyone can have a good idea. It's baloney. There are some people who are just more creative than others. And, and, um, and th those, are the, those are the people who on a regular basis create terrific advertising, whereas most of the people in the advertising world don't create terrific advertising. So, so the appreciation of creativity and the appreciation of what can be done by talented people has gone away. And right. that's very bad for the agency business. On the client side, um, every CMO in the world is worried about getting fired, and he has to show results not tomorrow, today. And he needs, he needs to show numbers, and he needs to show metrics, and he needs to show clicks. He can't wait for two or three years as a brand develops. Doesn't have the patience for that. Doesn't have the freedom for that. So what's happening is that the whole idea of brand building has become has taken a second uh, has taken a back seat to the idea of what is called performance advertising or performance oh marketing. wow oh wow oh wow there, there's Which, the evil word i wondered how long it yes. would take um <laughs> uh, performance performance marketing i think other yeah. other other words that you have a particular disdain for <laughs> is brand stories content yeah. and in particular you reserve a lot of love for social media teams let me let me uh, let this be kind of the cliffhanger we're going to have a few yeah. short messages uh and then you can share all your love uh for performance marketing and company so we'll be right back can you your team or your company benefit from insights such as the ones provided in this podcast they are immediately available when you join the Conference Board, a membership-based think tank that delivers trusted insights for what's ahead. Reaching across industries and geographies, we bring together our noted experts, senior executives from the world's largest companies, and nonpartisan practical research to help you address your most important business issues. Our membership packages are tailored to your organization's unique needs and budget. To learn more about our offerings, go to www.conferenceboard.org and click join on the top bar to connect with one of our product specialists. Hello and welcome back to our conversation with Bob Hoffman on his books Laughing at Advertising and Bad Men. Um, and uh, we're turning to, our, uh, to the second book now and to some uh, particularly beloved words and professions. Uh, for Bob, which are uh, um, the performance marketing field, brand stories, content, and social media teams. Well, Bob, c can you tell us why you love them so much? Yeah, let's start with content. Um, content is a meaningless word. Content is uh, a word that sounds like it means something, but it doesn't. If, I, if there's, a, if there's a, a, an old pizza crust 
on the ground, that's garbage. <laughs> but if I take a picture of a pizza crust and I put it on Facebook, now it's con- it's gotten promoted to being content, right? Uh, I'm sure the pizza ridiculous. feels better about it. Yeah, it's uh, it's now a major. It's a thing. It's content. Uh, storytelling has become such a cliche brand storytelling. Everyone is now. I'm a I'm a storyteller. You're not a storyteller. You're a copywriter. Shakespeare was a storyteller. You're a copywriter. Uh, storytelling isn't the answer to advertising. The story has to be interesting. The story has to be provocative. The story has to be motivational. Just because you're telling it, you know, six-year-olds tell stories. That's not the. the that's not the answer to doing good advertising. It's, it's just one, it, it's a word. You know, in the advertising business, uh, so many people in advertising and marketing don't really understand what they're doing. They've learned a vocabulary, you know? They have a vocabulary. They've learned 25 words, and they just repeat them over and over and over. And it's, uh, it's annoying to me. Now, um Clearly, we are on a rant trip here. I want to, though, yes. step back and acknowledge that there are, after all, quite a few brands that are making quite good money. So I'm not talking about WeWorks and the like. I'm actually talking about <laughs> making profits, okay? Um, yeah. That are born, that were born, and that are making a good business and have a loyal following through the internet through social media through e-commerce and and fulfillment directly online i'm talking about you know brands like everlane or glossier or outdoor voices or you name it um so there is an adapted way of telling interesting stories emotional stories creating communities all these things that you laugh at uh, some brands seem to succeed at it or, or are you saying everything's a fake no, of course there are some success stories, but success stories are, are are rare occasions, and most of what goes on in social media is a waste of time and money. Every copywriter in the world has a blog that nobody goes to. Every company in the world has a has a website. Every organization in the world has a website. Every uh, you know, and most of them just sit there and do nothing. Uh, there, it's a very rare organization company that has uh, that isn't in in retailing that isn't in online retailing that has a, a as a, that has a website that is actually contributing substantially to their business. Most of the websites just say, you know, when I was in the agency business, of course we had a website and I had a blog and. Uh, and the, my partners in the agency <clears throat> were afraid of my blog because it was controversial and contrarian. And so we never connected my blog to our website. And I would get more hits on my blog in one day than the website would get in a year. Right. And, um, and, but, uh, you know, it has to be, it's like any other creative. Uh, enterprise. It has but, to be really good to be successful. If it's just junk, if you're just posting stuff on the web to post stuff on the web, you're not going to be successful. I guess it points us to maybe one new uh, uh, approach here, at least a new way of expressing it on social media, which is um, if as a brand you find the so-called quote-unquote authentic voice and you're speaking truth, at least your truth, and that truth resonates with people, there is an opportunity that they will come in. They come on to your newsletter, they've subscribed, uh, but also, for example, um, there are, you know, four I like, uh, or four rooms, I guess you say in, in the US, like um, mm-hmm. the Bogleheads, which discuss Vanguard investment mutual funds forever and ever and has tens of thousands of members and it's very active, or people engaging a lot with Patagonia. So there are the exceptions, but I guess the exceptions is like in the past. It's those who master the craft of engagement. Right, uh, but it seems that it goes uh, that there are other options now than just um, the formal advertising um, that declares itself as such and is more or less uh, an an interesting sales story. 
Yes. I, I'm not a social media denier. I'm a social media success story. The reason you have me on your podcast today is social media. It's because right. of my newsletter. It's not for your looks is what you're blog. saying. Well, it's my looks too, of course, but that's, <laughs> uh, that's secondary. And so I'm not a social media denier. I know it works. It's worked for me. But what I'm saying is so much of what exists on social media is garbage. It's trash. It's a waste of time and money. It's an annoyance to people. And, um, and it's not taken seriously. Uh, it, it's being done by interns, it's, it, and it's being approved by people who, sh- who shouldn't have approval rights over things like that. And uh, it's, uh, it's a vast wasteland of junk as far as I'm concerned. Now, okay. is there one or two percent of it that is good? Yeah, and those people do well. But um, for the most part... It's it's if the most of it is worthless. We got the message. Let's turn to the subtitle of your book, which uh, yes sounds even more menacing because it says <laughs> advertising went from a minor annoyance. It sounds like it's a major annoyance actually from what we just talked. But you say it becomes a major menace. Now that that sounds less fun. Okay, uh, yeah. tell us what are be threatened with here. We are threatened with um, what can evolve into very dangerous territory for free societies. We know what happens when governments follow us everywhere, read our mail, um, listen into our conversations, have files about us. Historically, we know how awful that gets. That gets to the KGB and the Stasi and the Gestapo, things like that. We've never before had it where the marketing industry was doing that. The marketing industry is now reading our mails, listening to our conversations, following us everywhere, having files about, having files about us. This, I think, has already proven to be very dangerous. We know we have lost confidence in the in the presidential election of 2016 because of people screwing around um, with 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 data that they shouldn't have had and running ads that they shouldn't have run. Um, and we don't know where this leads, but it's hard for me to believe that it leads anywhere good. Um, and and the, you know the our, our privacy is part of democratic insti- of our democratic institutions. And um, since when did the convenience of marketers become more important than the privacy rights of citizens? That's what I want to know. Now, and, uh, uh, that, 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 that's, yeah. I mean, that's the critique of the, I guess, platforms mainly, like the Googles, the Facebooks, even the Amazons to some extent having become a major advertising platforms. Uh, how should I look at this as an advertiser? After all, I'm buying, I'm, I'm, I'm buying this data. Uh, supposedly it's uh, anonymized, but then increasingly, Uh, And as we know also through your newsletter, through Wall Street Journal, just in the last week, uh, two articles about, you know, uh, online influencers being a fraud, about uh, social media overall being a fraud, about, you know, very high percentages, I guess, between 20 and sometimes 65, 70, 80 percent of uh, social media uh, uh, investments uh, going nowhere and being lost. uh, why why should I buy into this as the owner of a brand? What do I get out of it? That's a very good question, and you really need to educate yourself. If you are a brand marketer and you have responsibility for a significant budget, one of your one of the most important things you have to do is to be educated on what's going on with your money and I don't think most CMOs are I don't think they know um, 
how much is being wasted on fraud. I don't think they know how many of the reports they get are un, on, on clicks and on traffic are unreliable. And um, it's it's a very difficult job these days. But if you but if you don't keep up to date and if you're not reading the experts on this, if you're just relying on the reports you're getting either from your agency or from your internal uh, data and, and metrics people, you are kidding yourself because the world is a lot stranger than you think it is, and particularly the online world. And now the TV world. There was just a report last week that OTT TV is 22% fraudulent viewers. So, but, but, um, uh, it, should this be a surprise at all? I mean, you have this uh, funny uh, passage in, in Laughing at Advertising where uh, you recount a real dialogue in the agency um, where a, a junior exec says, hey, you know, our email campaign got, got over 11 million impressions. And, uh, you know, the director says, okay, so how many click the ad? And, and, and then the junior exec says nine. And, and the senior is like nine, nine what, nine percent, nine million? No, nine, nine. Uh, and it's, it's funny on the one side, but it, it's the daily business when at least at, at a brand manager level, and in that famous social media team that you love so much, uh, people are looking at the actual meaningful clicks, the clicks, uh, even even gross numbers. But then for sure, when you make them net, uh, uh, subtracting what has to be assumed coming from bots. So are advertisers in denial? Are they desperate because they see no other way? What's going on? Or, or will they all basically get to where uh, it seems adidas has come last week or so when they admitted you know we made a huge mistake uh putting so much emphasis on social media spending yeah i think um you know w one of the problems is that if you if you if you say, I don't think we should be doing social media because there's too much fraud. If you think we shouldn't be doing uh, online advertising because there's too much fraud and there's traffic fraud and there's click frauds, you're going to be outside the normal range. And in the marketing world today, outside the normal range is a very dangerous place to be. It's better to be wrong within the normal range than to be right outside the normal range. And what what what, and what about all the associations, the ANAs, the 4As, the Super As, the AMAs, ANAs, um, <laughs> mayonnaise, um, uh, uh, are, are, aren't they there to, to help the agencies uh, be honest and uh, to defend advertisers respectively? Uh, why can we not rely on them or can we? They have become unreliable and irresponsible, in my opinion. I think the ANA and the 4As have defended and continued to defend all the worst habits of the online world. They are defenders of tracking. They are defenders of surveillance. Uh, they are on the wrong side of history. And I don't know why they are there. I, particularly, I can understand why the agencies are there. Because the agencies are afraid of their own shadows. They're afraid to stand up and, and, and I say, guess there's you know, little, there, 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 And I guess there's little incentive in the system to stop the abuse since everyone except for the client is kind of benefiting from it. So, you know, um, I mean, yeah. at the end, everyone gets a few pennies or even a fraction of a penny yeah. from those bots. Is that right? Exactly. Yeah, the, the, the ad agencies are afraid to tell the truth for two reasons. Number one, because they will look like fools. They'll look like they've been played for fools by the online media for years, spending money on worthless junk. And number two, they make money on this stuff. They're making money on, the, 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 as far as the agencies go, they're making money on their buys. It doesn't matter if they're buying fraud or not. They're still making money. Now, so I, know, I, I know we're yeah. both optimists, uh, and we're already yeah. running out of time, and I want to okay. finish on a positive <laughs> note. 
Tell oh. me the good outcome of this. Is it, uh, I think P&G has just released that they want to build up now or already in the process of building up their own data sets, uh, uh, permission marketing of a new kind, if you like, but also me uh, measurements. Uh, where, where do you see the good outcome that I'm, I'm, I'm sure will come? Uh, will it come from governments? Will it come from clients? Will it come from everyone? It will only come from governments because the marketing industry is too, too irresponsible to take care of its own business. Uh, uh, and that has been shown over the past 10 years. Um, we've defended all the wrong, all the wrong uh, practices. We have not been grown up enough to say, hey, wait a minute, what's going on here? We better take a step back and look at what we're doing here because it's dangerous. So I think it's going to, sadly, I'm not one of these guys who thinks the government should regulate everything. Gotcha. But as far as, but as, far as this is concerned, we need government regulation. Gotcha. Hey, a few quick fire last questions here. Um, here are the subtitles. Every step you take, every move <laughs> you make, I'll be watching you. Are you particularly fond of the police? Have you told them that you kind of uh, knocked them off in your book? Yeah, uh, I uh, no. Uh, yeah, the 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 song, the the uh, lyrics to that song seem to work well with uh, what what I was uh, trying to say in the book. So I used the I used the lyrics as uh, chapter titles. But um, just between me and you, JP, don't quit your day job. Gotcha. Yeah, the, si the, the singing is not going to make it. I'm sorry. Thank you. S <laughs> same here. You know, don't 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 go on don't go on video podcasts. Um, and uh, the other question I had, lo looking at your um, Amazon uh, 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 list here, did you really write Bob Hoffman's simplified system to barbell training? Yeah. No. That's a different Bob Hoffman. That's what I uh, thought, because that was written in yeah. the 1930s. And I, I know you're <laughs> yeah. an old bloke, but not that old, I think, right? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Well, B Bob, thanks so much. Um, before we let you go, um, yeah. uh, we have this little segment here uh, uh, that I'm, I'm supposed to ask you, but it's interesting. Um, what are actually the kind of books and the kind of read, or maybe it's a podcast or uh, a newsletter that inspire yeah. you? Is it maybe those, those conferences that you are at all the time? Does that give you inspiration uh, for what to write about next? No, the conferences are uh, very uh, stultifyingly dull for the most part. Um, I, I don't read that much about advertising and marketing. There are a few books that I really enjoyed. There's one called the uh, Paul Feldwick. Um, oh, man, I can't think of it. The, the Something of Humbug. Uh, it's a really good book. Um Of course, Byron Sharp's books I like. I like anything How Brands by Grow. Dave. Yeah, anything by Dave Trot is great. Um, there's a book by Richard Shotton. Okay, called... so clearly, clearly, you did not get the brief uh, since you do not mention my book. So. Um, ah. That's why we'll have to keep it at this to to <laughs> to keep the podcast in the right length is my pretext here. Um, Bob, thanks a lot again uh, for taking uh, time to come on our show. If people want to get in touch with you, what's the easiest way? Where do they subscribe? Um, Typeagroup.com is my website or the ad contrarian. Dot com is my blog. Excellent. Well, thanks again, Bob. And uh, with this, uh, dear listener, I uh, need to tune out. If you enjoyed this edit uh, episode, please remember to subscribe to our Off the Shelf uh, book discussion podcast or any other of our podcast. There's uh, the entire catalog uh, that you can find on conference-board.org slash podcast. Uh, and with that, I hope we'll uh, uh, hear you again, or rather you us, uh, very soon. Thanks again, Bob. Tschüss, auf Wiedersehen.